Hello, I'm Matt Kramer, and we have Haas Clark, and Kevin Zrady, and Chardonnay. Let us stipulate that Chardonnay, unlike, say, Sauvignon Blanc, is trickier to choose. That's First, true. How can a consumer, can, can a normal human being who's not crazy like the three of us, land on a really good Chardonnay? Oz, you were talking about Chablis earlier. Now, is that your go-to Chardonnay? It's my go-to Chardonnay if I want an unoaked style. Now, by unoaked, I mean you don't get that vanilla flavor, you don't get that toasty flavor. You get a, a fundamentally a naked wine. Mm. The wine is there without makeup, without clothes. So what, it, what does it state for? It, it, it tastes simply of the grape variety and probably the stainless steel tank in which it was made. The stainless steel tanks give no flavor mm. to wine. Chablis, or Chablis, um, since I was to pronounce yeah, my wine we properly are now, the I'm state, in the States, I've got to pronounce it properly. Yeah, yeah. None of the ang Anglo yes, kind of yes, stuff. Yes. Uh, Chablis um, is what I would say uh, the go-to wine for a very austere style of wine, a minerally style of wine, a, a, a wine which has got absolutely no chubbiness, no fatness, no, no sort of juicy, flirtatious quality at all. If I wanted a go-to wine uh, for a richer style, I would probably uh, go to New Zealand or Australia, but not the big international global in every corner store brands, because those are just going to be sugary, just the same as the California brands are. So Chablis for the dry, very dry austere style, and New Zealand or Australia, but not at the bottom price range, for the richer, rounder, more toasty style. Yeah, I'm, yeah well, we have a go to shirt. I, well, I'm, a, I'm also a sports fan. Okay, like many, many wine writers started in sports. It's incredible. Unbelievable how many have, but the fact is we, get, we have a team here called the New York Yankees. I don't know if you ever heard of them. Uh, they're, no, they're, they're, not they're, me. Yeah, have you heard of them? No, 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 okay, they have, you I've know. I've heard of Boston Red Sox. No, so oh, boy. I remember right. there's a team This is our Boston last Red show Sox. together, just so everybody understands that. <laughs> uh, anyhow, my point is it's the classics, okay? It's the Babe Ruths or the Luke Gehrig's or whoever yeah. they are. And to me, the classic Chardonnay is Burgundy France. Now, again, Chablis being inside of Burgundy. Uh, some of the great villages of Mirceau or Pouligny Mont Rocher, and I'll stop there because Burgundy, as we all know, is very, very complicated. But even even going further south to a Macon, to the simple M A C O N, or, or, or as in Atlanta they say Macon. Macon. Yeah, we give them the Macon wine in Atlanta. But the fact remains is Burgundy, France, is where Chardonnay is to be the best. Second place for me is California, and not in the hot climates, in the cooler climates uh, of Sonoma or the Sonoma Coast, or even going down to the Santa Barbara region. So I'm just talking about classics, uh, and then the third, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, I, I really go back to you on your Australia and exactly pinpoint where in Australia, if it, if it would say so on the label, I want an Australian Chardonnay from where? Uh, if you want the richer style, go to South Australia. It would say South Australia. Uh, it would say South Australia or Barossa. Okay. Uh, on it or McLaren Vale. That's the richer style. If you want the leaner style, you can go to Adelaide Hills in the South Australia, Tasmania way down in the Very south, deep. or the various bits of Victoria, okay. and particularly Yarra Valley and Mornington Peninsula. Now those will give you wines that are surprisingly like the great wines of Merceau and Pelé de Fair enough. Too Chardonnay. Too Chardonnay. Too Chardonnay. And to good luck in finding a good one. <laughs>